Hello Storm Water Designers and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos. In previous videos we went over the SCS runoff method, the rational method, and the water cycle. And now we want to go over what a hydrograph is and how it can be used in hydrology and our stormwater analysis. Remember, when water falls on a certain watershed, that water must go somewhere. Hydrographs can be used to determine how a watershed will react to a certain amount of rainfall falling on that watershed. Hydrographs can be used to reveal characteristics of a watershed, and then we can view that information graphically in a hydrograph and view it in analysis. So what is a hydrograph? What are the components? Well, typically it includes discharge, Q, and CFS on the y-axis for English units, and the time in hours or minutes on the x-axis. By graphing this relationship, like I said, we can determine the characteristics of the watershed and make some judgments about that watershed. Now, methods like the rational method or SCS runoff method are good for determining the runoff on a watershed, the precipitation, and determine some empirical relationships between values. However, a hydrograph is more for analysis and determining the characteristics of a watershed and helping us to derive solutions from those characteristics and the graphical analysis. So hydrograph is a way of displaying water level information over time. Hydrographs can be used to evaluate the characteristics and performance of a watershed, giving us valuable information of a potential project site. So what are the different parts of a hydrograph? As you can see by the diagram on the right, this is a typical storm hydrograph. And there are many different components here. We have the base flow and through flow. The base flow is going to be the lowest flow of the watershed. This usually is occurring in the lower layers of the watershed and is factored in when determining, when determining the runoff from a specific site. We also have the peak discharge, which is going to be the top of the curve there, which is next to the rising limb, which is when the graph is increasing, and the falling limb when it is decreasing. We can also see the lag time is the time between the peak discharge and the peak rainfall of the watershed. So what is a unit hydrograph? A unit hydrograph is the direct runoff hydrograph that would result from one unit of runoff occurring uniformly in space and time over a specified period. And there's a couple different equations for a unit hydrograph. We can see here that the Q is going to equal one half the peak flow times the time duration of the unit hydrograph. And there's quite a few different versions of a unit hydrograph. There's a standard unit hydrograph, a synthetic hydrograph, and an SES unit hydrograph. Different shape factors that apply to these graphs, with 484 being the typical shape factor, will actually affect how this graph looks and performs. So for different hydrograph types, we can see this unit synthetic SES with the different shape factors. Here's some additional equations for determining hydrograph characteristics. We can see that the standard duration of rainfall equals T sub P over 5.5, the lag time from the midpoint of duration, the duration of rainfall excess other than the standard duration adopted in a study, the peak flow for duration. For hydrograph methods, peak flow can be determined by area runoff, time to peak, and a factor. The drainage area is often in square miles, and the 484 peaking constant is often used. For different areas of the country or the world, a different peaking constant may be used. The value of 484 is the result of assuming that the recession limb is 1.67 times the rising limb, or the time to peak, and may not be applicable to all watershed types. As I said, it can vary in different parts of the country or the world. So if we look at this equation here, the peak flow in CFS equals 484 peaking constant times the drainage area in miles squared times the volume of direct runoff. We're going to be using one for unit hydrograph in inches. So let's actually plot a few hydrographs here. So in the first problem, we have create a unit hydrograph. So create a unit hydrograph and identify the base flow, limbs, peaks, and lag time. So what is our process here? We can see we have a table showing time in hours versus discharge. So we're going to want to plot the data on the x and y axis, create a graph based on the plot data, and then identify these components. So we can see here if we graph that we have a typical hydrograph shape, which typically starts very low, raises up very quickly to the peak, and then gradually falls off. So we can see the peak is at the top there. We can find the rising and falling limb. We also want to identify the base flow of the graph, which can be seen when the graph begins to increase and then down to where it gradually decreases here, we can draw a line identifying the base flow. And the lag time would be the difference between that peak and the initial runoff. You can see another diagram here of a graphical representation of the unit hydrograph with the lag time and time of concentration being identified. Let's try another problem here where we create a hydrograph, find the peak flow of a quarter square mile drainage area given the plotted SCS hydrograph, and then identify the base flow as well. So we have the time and discharge. We'll go ahead and plot that and use our equation. Peak flow equals the peaking constant times the drainage area in miles square times the volume of direct runoff, which we'll be using one inch for over the time to peak. So we can see here we have our hydrograph. Let's identify the base flow. 
it seems to begin increasing here and begins falling off here. So that's what we'll identify as our base flow. And now let's solve the equation. The peak flow will equal 44 times 0.25 times 1 divided by 1.1, since the time to peak based on hours looks to be about 1.1. So 45 CFS is the peak flow in this case. So unit hydrographs represent the unique characteristics or template of that specific watershed. So it can help us identify how that watershed will react to different rainfall events. We hope that video was useful. We have a ultimate hydrology guide, which explains the differences between different forms of hydrology, such as continuous simulation, single event, and graphical methods. You can find that guide in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.